Are aliens sending signals to NASA from space? We've seen it many times in cartoons and movies, where aliens send signals to Earth, either intentionally or otherwise. Of course, movies and cartoons are make-believe, but are they really? Is it possible that aliens have been sending us signals for centuries and we just didn't know? Keep watching this video, as we'll be attempting to answer the question, are aliens sending signals to NASA from space? What you need to know. Don't be alarmed, but radio transmissions have been reaching Earth for years from unknown origins. Scientists have now located some of these origins, and what they discovered startled them. Astronomers have located five rapid radio bursts, or deep space signals, using NASA's Hubble Space Telescope. These intense explosions produce as much energy in a thousandth of a second as the sun does in a year. Since the first one was found in 2001, some 1,000 fast radio bursts, or FRBs, have been found. But they are famously challenging to monitor because they vanish in an instant and leave no trace. Just 15 of these have been located in particular galaxies. In order to identify the types of cosmic events that cause these powerful pulses, scientists are interested in monitoring their origin. What are the latest studies saying? In the latest study, which will appear in the Astrophysical Journal, Astronomers used Hubble's Wide Field Camera 3 to identify the host galaxies of five out of eight recent FRBs and the kinds of sources they came from. The spiral arms, where stars are formed, are a characteristic of all of these far-off galaxies. Two brief, intense radio bursts have been located by astronomers using the Hubble Space Telescope. Our findings are novel and fascinating. Five of the FRBs in this first high-resolution image of a population are found on or near a galaxy's spiral arms. According to Hubble, said Alexandra Mannings, the main author of the study. She also stated that the majority of the galaxies are large, quite young, and still generating stars. Because Hubble has such excellent resolution, the imaging enables us to investigate what's happening right at the FRB spot, as well as gain a better understanding of the host galaxy's general features, such as its mass and star formation rate. As a result of the variations in the star distribution, some of the arm formations were more tightly wrapped than others. According to the photos taken, it is unlikely that the FRBs originate from the most massive, young stars in the galaxies. What caused the flares? Scientists believe that neither the merger of neutron stars nor the cataclysmic deaths of these young stars are the likely causes of the flares. Additionally, they are not from dwarf galaxies, which researchers previously failed to rule out as a potential source. Astronomers are reducing the range of potential explanations for these enigmatic signals with each new finding. Wen Fei Feng, a team member, said, We don't know what causes FRBs, so it's vitally crucial to use context when we have it. For locating the origins of other kinds of transients, like supernovae and gamma ray bursts, this method has proven to be quite effective. Hubble also contributed significantly to those investigations. So where are these FRBs coming from? Are beings from another planet using the FRBs to contact us? Fortunately or unfortunately, this is not the case. The research team's findings are consistent with the hypothesis that youthful magnetars, a class of neutron star with strong magnetic fields, are the source of the FRBs. They are 10 trillion times stronger than a refrigerator door magnet, and scientists refer to them as the strongest magnets in the universe. Fong explains that magnetars are highly unpredictable because of their powerful magnetic fields. The FRBs in this instance are believed to be the result of flares from a juvenile magnetar. Massive stars evolve into neutron stars through stellar processes, some of which can be highly magnetized and produce flares and magnetic surface processes that can emit radio waves. Scientists are seeing galaxies as they were when the cosmos was roughly half its present age since the galaxies recorded in the study lived billions of years ago. Many of them have mass comparable to the Milky Way, another kind of spiral galaxy. The distance of each galaxy from Earth is 400 million to 9 billion light years. Fong declared, this is such a brand new and fascinating topic. Finding these localized occurrences is a crucial piece of the jigsaw, and it is a fairly original puzzle piece in comparison to previous work. What you need to know about space communications it can seem simple to communicate with spacecraft in films and television programs. Astronauts can have a delay-free, crystal-clear video conversation with loved ones on Earth when they are on distant worlds. However, 
Are these hypothetical communication capabilities accurate? Actually, no. Getting messages to and from space is difficult. Fortunately, NASA has the knowledge and skills necessary to transmit space data to Earth. This information can be exchanged with astronauts on the International Space Station, rovers on Mars, or the Artemis missions to the Moon, thanks to NASA's Space Communications and Navigation Program. With that being said, let's examine some of the difficulties in space communications, as well as the tools and methods NASA employs to solve them. One, the foundations. A transmitter and a receiver are the only components needed for space communications at their most basic level. Through modulation, a transmitter transfers a message onto an electromagnetic wave by altering the wave's physical characteristics to represent the information. These waves travel through the void and arrive at the receiver. The message from the sender is decoded by the receiver after it gathers the electromagnetic waves and demodulates them. Think about your home's networked devices and Wi-Fi router. The router transports data from the internet and sends signals to each device. The difficult issue of communicating with space is fundamentally similar to wireless communications in the home, but on a massive scale and at incredible distances. Two, ground networks. It takes more than just aiming a spacecraft's antenna at the Earth to communicate from orbit. To receive messages from a spacecraft, NASA has a vast global network of antennas covering all seven continents. Communication between ground stations and missions is carefully planned by network engineers, who also make sure that antennas are prepared to receive data as spacecraft fly overhead. Small, very high-frequency antennas that support the space station's backup communications can be found on the ground, as well as large, 230-foot antenna that can communicate with distant missions like the Voyager spacecraft, which is located over 11 billion miles away. Three, satellite relays. Many NASA projects rely on relay satellites in addition to direct-to-Earth communications to provide their data to the ground. For instance, the Tracking and Data Relay Satellites, TDRS, used by the Space Station for Communication, send information to ground stations in Guam and New Mexico. Data from the recently launched Mars 2020 Perseverance rover will be transmitted to Earth via orbiters near Mars. Regarding the accessibility of communications, relays offer special benefits. For instance, the installation of TDRS at three different altitudes above the planet allows for nearly constant communication between missions in low Earth orbit and the ground. TDRS users can send data whenever they choose, without having to wait to cross over a ground station. Four, bandwidth. Data is encoded by NASA using different electromagnetic frequency bands. These bandwidths, or frequency bands, have various capacities. Spacecrafts can download data more quickly with higher bandwidths because they can carry more data per second. Although NASA currently uses radio waves primarily for communication, the organization is working to find a technique to use infrared lasers. Missions will be able to transmit data at higher rates than ever before because of this method of transmission known as optical communications. The advantages of optical communications will be demonstrated by NASA's Laser Communications Relay Demonstration, LCRD. For the purpose of proving their capabilities, the mission will use optical links to relay data between ground stations in California and Hawaii. Additionally, NASA will equip the space station with an optical terminal that can transmit data via LCRD to the ground. Five, data rates. For missions, increased bandwidths may equate to higher data rates. Black and white, blurry footage from the moon was sent by Apollo radios. The Artemis II mission will soon use an optical terminal to transmit 4K ultra-high definition footage from lunar orbit. Data rates are, however, not simply limited by bandwidth. The distance between the transmitter and receiver, the size of the antennas or optical terminals they utilize, and the power available on each end are other variables that can impact data rates. To maximize data rates, NASA communications engineers must balance these factors. As you can see, space communication isn't as easy as it is portrayed to be in cartoons and sci-fi movies. It comes with several challenges, but with hopes of steady technological advancements and in-depth research, we can expect that NASA will be able to pick up and interpret signals faster than ever before. Thanks for watching and see you next time.